Rob, obviously it was such a massive game, Lincoln, 40 years ago. What, what are your memories of sort of like the build up to it? Because it was sort of like a winner takes all event, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, obviously, I think the, the, the original game got called off in January. I, I can't remember what for, maybe in a, 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 a frozen pitch or something. But And that was in January. So it became the, the, the penultimate, or well, the game before that, we knew that we were going to play Lincoln and it was going to be us or them. And um, I was only a youngster, me in 2020, you know what I mean? It was, um, we were at a, quite an experienced side in, in Roger Brown and Gailey and Ray Lou and people like that. So the build up to it was, um, yeah, it was was quite tense knowing what it was, you know, win at all costs really, uh, and, and or draw at the very least to, to make sure that we got over the line. It's hard to believe, you know, that's 40 years ago. That's that's the crazy thing. It's 40 years ago. But I do remember, yeah, I remember, uh, you know, we'd had a good season uh, under Malcolm McDonald. He'd taken over from uh, when Bobby Campbell went. And um, I think we went in, I think we had, for some reason, we had three home games at the end of the season. And I think had we won them all, we'd have been laughing. But as it turned out, I think we we drew, or maybe with Gillingham or somebody like that, I can't remember. But And then we beat Preston, second to last game. Ivor got a couple and uh, Dixie got one, I think. And then going into the, I think it's the first season of three points for a win, I think, if I remember rightly. Um, so we went into the last game. Had we won it, we, we'd have won the league. Um, had Lincoln won it, of course, they'd have gone above us and we, we wouldn't have been promoted at all. And it ended up a, a draw, a very tense draw in the end. And, uh, you know, Brownie with that great header from uh, from Tony Gale's free kick. And then we were hanging on a little bit. Um, but, yeah, it was uh, it was great. I mean, I thought we'd... Uh, I actually, like most people, thought we'd, we'd win the game and uh, and we could have gone up as champions. But uh, just the fact to get promoted and uh, and celebrate as, as it has been this season, as it has been every time, you know, it's... It's always great to get promoted and uh, it was a good team and a, and a really enjoyable season in the end, obviously. If Lincoln had won, um, they'd have gone uh, gone up and we'd have stayed down. So we was excited, but we'd, we'd played well that season and we were looking forward to it. We were very confident and, um, you know, they, they were a decent team, to be quite honest, either, weren't they? Yeah, and, and the problem is in those days, they went route one and you knew, even if they were playing badly as a team, the ball was going to come in the box 50 or 60 times in the 90 minutes and we had, um, well, yeah, we'll probably speak about him later on, but we had a big man mountain at the back, Roger Brown. Uh, but we went into it with a lot of confidence, but we knew it was going to be one hell of a game because just the physicality of it. Yeah, my memory is that the game was played quite some time after the end of the season. They don't do that now. They always make sure all the matches finish or, or start and finish it in the last round of matches at the same time. But this game was probably quite some days after everybody else had finished playing. So there was a big expectation around the game. And uh, my memory is that if Fulham could win the game, we would actually win the championship. We would go ahead of Burnley. If we drew the game, we would get promotion. But if we lost, then Burnley would go ahead of us and they would get promotion. So all options were uh, on the game, really, uh, you know, including missing out on promotion. So there was big excitement in the build-up to the game and uh, a, lot of, a lot of nervousness and uh, apprehension, but also optimism as well. And I saw that it was over 20,000 fans turned up for that, which I think was double the next highest attendance that season. It must have been some atmosphere inside the ground. Yeah, it was. there was more than 20,000. I think there were more like 25 or 20, whatever this good old and more. Um, yeah, it was absolutely rocking the place. And, and Lincoln bought their fair share as well. And, you know, the game unfolded as, as it did to, 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 to the way it went, to right to the wire. Um, and the scenes afterwards, I'm sure many many of folk often talk to me nowadays and say, "Wow, that was a great you know seeing us in the cottage celebrating, which you know was was lovely for such a young age." I remember walking to the game, and and when you were quite some distance from the ground, you could hear the noise in in the ground. The fans in the Hammersmith end were singing 15, 20 minutes before the start of the match. There were no playlists in those days there was no sort of pre-match um, theme to, uh, to the music it was just the fans making a noise and the, the atmosphere was electric they say there was 21,000 in the ground that night and uh, we had a rather unscrupulous chairman around that time and I would I would say in my experience there was a lot more than 21,000 people in the ground and uh, so probably three times the largest crowd more likely than double Great atmosphere that night. It was made by the Lincoln fans, actually, behind the goal as well, because they had a huge contingent that came down because uh, promotion was on it for them as well. So we had to get a draw out of the game. Shame is that we didn't win, because if we won, we'd have won by being... Uh, that would have made us champions. But we drew, we went up.
I can't not talk about that game without talking about Dale Tempest. It, you know, Dale came on only one sub in those days, so we'd obviously picked the sub that should we need goals late in the game, he was a striker. Perhaps he could have gone on and changed something for us. Les Strong had been injured late in the season and uh, he started the game and very early on just couldn't carry on, had to come off. So Dale went in at left back and he'd never played at left back in his life before and he probably hasn't since. Um, but he was magnificent. He didn't put a foot wrong. Uh, if you if you talk to him, he'll say that he did everything nice and simple and didn't try to be too clever. But he was absolutely brilliant for us that night. And uh, he didn't play that many games for Fulham, you know, 30, 40 games. But that would probably be his greatest game. So he certainly made a contribution. But everybody played well that night. It was it was just a cracking match. And, uh, and uh, you know, one that I still remember. It would certainly be in my list of all-time favourite Fulham games that I attended as a fan. You had one sub. Um, I th- youngsters listening to this go, what? One sub? Are you mad? You know, but that's what it was. So that season, I was on the bench quite a bit, um, you know, because I could play in lots of positions. Whilst I was a centre forward, I could fit in anywhere. Um, and of course, with Les getting injured in the first what, 10, 15, 20 minutes or something, I ended up playing left back for the whole of the game. So you can imagine the last thing. The good thing was in those days, there was definitely no passing it across the back and getting it from the keeper in the six yard box. I would have been panicking then. Um, when it came and you you wanted to get rid, you got rid of it up the park straight away. No messing. You didn't want to be the person caught in possession and that caused you the goal. We got our noses in front though with a, a goal straight off the training ground. Um, some might say it's quite a good assist. Well, brilliant. We, pra- we practised it in Bishop's Park, actually, because uh, Dean Cohn, who played up front, he would make the first run, and then as he made his run, on the way back, he would block off Roger Brown's marker. So that was that, and all it had to do was put it on a sixpence. So that's what I was good at, Jeff. You know. <laughs> we worked on it continuously, didn't we? Yeah, and, it, and it, it was one of those things, OK, you call it a block off, um, and the first team now are, are using that. Uh, I think they were a little bit more obvious in the way that they block off the, than we were. Um, but, yeah, it was, a, it was a great ball put in, and, and you knew anything from 10, 15 yards out. If, if Brownie had the opportunity, he, he was going to hit the target because he was such a, a powerful header of the ball anyway. The goal, I uh, just remember seeing Roger, he was, he was like hot that much above the rest of the players. I was just looking at him and he just met it perfectly. Oh, an amazing goal. And of course, everybody started celebrating, but it was a bit too early because those last 10 10 minutes ended up just being a nightmare. They had a man sent off in in the second half and from that free kick, Tony Gale flighted the ball into the box and Roger Brown looked like he was two foot above everybody else and headed it into the back of the net. And because they just they just gone down to ten men, you think, well, that's it now. We're gonna we're gonna go up as champions. And then fair fair play to and credit to Lincoln. I mean, they threw the kitchen sink at us, then the bathroom sink, and then they probably threw the bath at us as well. It was it was they they absolutely poured forward, got an equaliser, and then they stepped it up again uh, just with ten men and. It was like watching a, a horror movie. It was frightening because we were clearing it off the line and was hitting the bar, the post, and goal mouth scrambles and people screaming with the you know the tension of it. And it seemed like the last ten minutes went on forever. It was a bit nerve jangling that last five or ten minutes. I can't. I'm, I, I do talk to fans about the one off the line. I can't remember it. I've not seen footage of it since. But yeah, it was uh, it was very very close. They'd had a man sent off. Um, you know, put us under a little bit of pressure. But eventually we got over the line and it was, you know, it was a, an eventful night after the game. And, you know, we all went out celebrating to a club and it was, um, yeah, it was, goes down in memory for me. And Roger Brown was his 12th goal of the season, which for a centre-back is still a record for a Fulham player. Um, it's some return. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, and they were all, uh, I mean, he didn't take penalties or, or anything like that. They are all probably all headers. I don't know, but I could be wrong. He might sneak one in with a swept it in with his right foot, but I think they were probably all headers. And it's quite remarkable, isn't it, 12 goal? I mean, Kick got a lot one, one season, didn't he? But it's, it's quite rare for a centre-half to, uh, to get that many goals. Brownie was great. I mean, Gailey and Brownie. You not score more in, in a season? Oh, well, no. I, I scored six, yeah. <laughs> Over 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, he, he was terrific. But our, our set pieces were fantastic. And we did work on them. We worked on them continually. We had... We had two or three really good set pieces that we nearly score from every single time. So we did work on it, but of course Brownie was, was, was immense in the air and, and such a good player. 
I mean, give him the ball and try and trap it, and he couldn't do it. But ask it to mark a, a tough centre forward out of the game, and he was brilliant. It was incredible, yeah. And Gailey will tell you it's down to his 12 deliveries from set pieces as well. Um, no, he, Roger just... If you put the ball in the right spot, there's no defender in the world could stop Roger getting on the end of it. He absolutely attacked every ball. Um, we had lots of good routines where we'd block defenders off so that Roger could get a free run. And to be fair to Gailey, he did deliver it on the sixpence every time. I mean, it's amazing how much, uh, how many times that free kick worked. I don't think it happened today because they got so much stuff on you, you know, when they're doing analysis of games before, games after and things like that. Maybe it wouldn't have worked, but it still was all about the time of the run. And he was such a good header at a ball brownie. that uh, It was a towering header. Oh, he, I can remember it like it was yesterday, that one. And uh, remember him having a cigar afterwards in the uh, changing room as well with a great big cut over him. And where does that match uh, rank for you guys in terms of your Craven Cottage memories? Uh, well, for me, um, yeah, one, obviously I was captain at the time as well. Um, but that's um, not quite on a par of getting to the cup final. I mean, that was that was exceptional, of course. Um, but it was memorable and, and, you know, you see still see supporters nowadays, obviously the older ones, who, who remember it uh, fondly, don't they? Yeah, and, and that's the thing, it's probably one of the best best games from my point of view at the cottage because A, you win, B, you can have the celebrations after the game as the first team have already uh, done last week um, but it was uh, it, it's up there with even the, the, the FA Cup games that I mentioned but because it was the only one promotion that we had um, in, in my playing career here then it, it, it's certainly up there on uh, page one or two of uh, the, the history in my mind Right up there, I mean that was one of the best because there was so much going on in the game. I can remember that day as well, like where I was living at the time on an housing estate with me mum and dad, you know, not knowing what to do all day. Such a long time to the build up before the game. So it was brilliant. And the fact that we got over the line and done what we had to do was what made it so good. More relief at the final whistle. You know, we'd, won, we'd not won, but we avoided defeat. We'd drawn the game and then the fans on the pitch and... You know, definitely one of the great, great nights at Craven Cottage, which sounds funny for one all draw at home to Lincoln, could be one of the all-time great nights at Craven Cottage, but it was. It was brilliant. It's right up there, I would think, anyone who was here that night, it's particularly the scenes up on the cottage balcony, because, you know, there's no more picturesque place to celebrate in, in any football stadium in the world, I don't think. And uh, it was a wonderful night, so, yeah, it's, it's right up there, mate, definitely right up there. And afterwards, we was, uh, went up in the cottage to salute the fans who'd all come on the pitch, and of course, the Lincoln fans were still held in, so we got a torrent of coins thrown at us. It was hilarious. <laughs> the celebration, if you look at the picture, there's a picture of us on the balcony. Uh, <clears throat> most of the players are spraying champagne everywhere. I'm drinking out of a bottle and you're drinking a can of lager. We're yeah. next to each other, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. and we've stayed friends ever since. Really? <laughs> <laughs> a great season, not just a great night, we, we'd come together, as I say, the combination of older pros, younger pros, and it just worked. And, and as I say, the, the Lincoln night is one of those which, you know, there's lots of Fulham fans are friends of mine. And it's the one night over the last 40 years they will talk about, say, oh, the Lincoln game. Particularly the older, you know, fans who were there. That what is one of those, I was there on the Lincoln night. It's one of those special things that sits with Fulham fans. That's, uh, yeah, it's a magical moment if you're a fan at a football club and you can experience that. Um, and it certainly was for all those 40,000 or however many were there on the night. Um, and the fact we're talking about it now just shows what a special night it was for everybody involved.